I was just thinking about being in art school and this one weekend I went water skiing. It wasn't even a weekend, it was just like one day. I went water skiing so I wasn't in, in the dorms and um, a bunch of people graffitied the bathroom real bad, like got wasted and messed up the bathroom so, so bad. Like wrote all kinds of stuff about like the, the guy who ran the, the dorm buildings, Rick, the, you know, wrote stuff about Rick and his cat. And um, Pam, Pam, Pam Holzel, the, at the time she was like director or what, I don't know, you know, she was, but she wasn't the president, but she, that was George Perino. Well, Pam Holzo, she was in charge of the students, pretty much. And, um, you know, they had all kinds, the, the, the walls were covered, it was an art school. So, um, the walls were covered, it said stuff like, Pam sauces her own taco, and stuff like that. I was away, I was away, you know, I had nothing to do with it. So, of course, when Pam and Rick were in there looking at it with disgust, I went in there and told him how disgusted I was, and you know I I think that it's very I think it's just horrible what they've done to the bathroom, and you know these horrible things that were written about you, Rick and Pam. I, I feel really terrible about it. I wasn't here, or I would have stopped them. You know I would have stopped everybody from doing it because I was probably the most responsible per person on my floor. I was older coming out of the Navy and much more mature and would have never done anything like that. That's the approach that I took and um, they, they, they didn't like my sarcasm, you know. They, they could detect a sarcastic tone in my voice and I think they just wanted me to leave and said something like that, like, Peter, uh, we need to discuss this and take some pictures. Uh, could you leave me and Rick? You know, something like that. I don't know why I was, why I was thinking about that. I remember, um, man, they, they were like threatening to kick some of the kids out of school and shit. Like, it's a private school. It's an expensive school. Most of the kids, parents, what they did was they just called their parents. So at 18, you're an adult. So I don't really know why they're calling your parents. Just kick the people out or don't, you know. They gave them like work study or something. They got I did a work study. I was too busy getting up with a hangover to make it on time most of the time. Some of the time I would I would do it. I really didn't have too great of a work ethic when it came to sweeping up like the sculptures floor. You know, it's all a joke. Work study, I remember work study was just to like give the poor kids money. We could sort of like show up or not show up. Um, they might say something like, hey, could you really, could you make sure to show up on Thursday? And then I, you know, yeah, sure, no problem. And then make sure and get it all cleaned up. College was fun. You know, that's, that's the point of college is getting laid and getting wasted. I don't know if I really learned that much. Um, I'm sure I learned something. You know, I mean, can, when you're talking about art, either you have it or you don't. You know, art school's not gonna really, I don't know, maybe it'll bring it out in some people or something. It was already in me. I was already making art, you know, when I was in the military. You know, that's, that's how I got into the school. I, was, I injured my, injured my leg and then I was recouping in the hospital and I started painting. So I, I was already like committed to like this is what I'm going to do. I remember when I was um, recuperating I was looking through a desk drawer that was in the place, the room where I was staying and there was a New York City, what was it, a New York art gallery guide or something like that. I started looking through it and I'm like you know, I know it sounds cliche, but I said, oh, I can do that, you know, I, I can do this, you know, my, my stuff will not be like 
that, but I can, I can, I can make art at that level. And that's when I sort of made the decision, like I was getting out of the military, I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to fucking art school, you know? High school was a bummer, grade school was a bummer. It was, it was pretty much a bummer, but art school was not a bummer. I got good grades. I did, man, I, I even did the requir required reading, you know? It's hard to believe. I didn't, you know, I wasn't really into reading, not reading, reading. You know, I think I read my first book when I was about 18. So the story about the dog trainer that you know, says he wants to be prepared and takes a knife with him. It even gets more fucked up. It is. Now I'm hearing that it's in regards to him walking a dog and then having some asshole that has a dog off of a leash running over and almost tearing up the dog. So now he wants to protect the client and he wants to protect his client with a knife. Dude, that's just, you know, like, um, that's not psycho, that's not paranoid, that's just flat out stupid, okay? That's just proof this guy's just an idiot. What, what, what are you going to do, hold the dog down and stab it? Why would you want to stab the dog with a knife? And, and it, if it's because, like, he got into it with the owner, like, oh, you, this is a big dude, man. Why, do, why are you taking a knife if you're worried about a dog? A stray dog bothering you, dude. If you're that worried, if you're that worried, if you can't control the stray dog coming at you, okay. Listen, listen, dude. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what I do because I'm in Brooklyn. I run into strays all the time. Okay, I don't carry a knife. Okay, so if you see this, this is what you do. You make eye contact with the dog that's coming towards you. Start saying no, no, and make yourself look bigger going at the dog, and you have a dog next to you. Right? So you it's two animals, right? And get sort of low down by the dog. It looks like one big animal to the dog coming towards you. And no, and be real forceful. If you are so unconfident as a dog trainer, you don't think that you can get the stray dog to get the fuck away from you, the dog that's off of a leash, you, you can't manage to do it. You don't take a knife, okay? That's, oh, what it, oh, look, a dog's coming. I better get my knife out. You, this guy sounds like a fucking idiot, okay? If you have a problem with a stray dog like this, and, you know, you're, you, you know that the dog's always going to be somewhere or something, you could use, like, a broomstick, but a knife? Better yet, this, this guy isn't real bright, okay? So, listen, there's something called dog mace on the Internet. You can order it, and they will send it to you, and it's, it's what the, the post office, the postal employees use when they have a, a dog problem. If they're being harassed by a dog, all you have to do is spray it, and the dog will go off. You know, it doesn't want to be around you because you use dog mace on them. That costs you about $10, and you won't have to stab the dog, okay? And if you have any other problem. I can't believe I'm explaining this to a dog. He'll never see this, but somebody else will see this, okay? So, if you have a problem with the dog again and you see the dog coming, all you will have to do is spray the mace in the vicinity of the dog. If it just gets a whiff of it, it's going to hightail it out of there. He wants to take a knife with him to protect it. Hey, all, I'm all for protecting the client. But if, if you think that taking a knife with you to protect your client from a fucking dog that's off of a leash, this guy's an idiot. I recommended him once. Somebody asked me, do you know anybody in this area of the country? And I, you know, I asked somebody and they said, oh, so I, I said this guy, this guy's pretty popular. And it's, it's, it's not a shock. It's not a shock that he's popular. Zach George is a buffoon too. He's popular. I wonder what he does. You know, here comes a stray dog. What's Zach do? Oh, you know, here, let let him let him pal around together. I guess I don't know, but this this guy's a fucking idiot. He takes in. You know, I'm not gonna recommend this dog trainer ever because it really sounds like he's an idiot. He's an idiot. You know, he takes a knife with him, or. 
um, if you know, I don't really know where he lives. I know what state he lives in, but you know, maybe they have animal control. You could have the animal control guy come, or maybe call the police and say, I have a problem with this guy he's in my neighborhood, he keeps letting his dog off of a leash and it's aggressive. But you don't, you don't take a knife, stupid. What, what, what are you, what are you gonna, what, are, what, are you, what kind of fucking moron would think that that's gonna be helpful? I got, I got a problem with the dog off of a leash, so I got a knife. Get away from me, dog. You know, I, I can't believe that this guy can even string words together and create a sentence. That's, that's a fucking mind-boggling stupid. Dog mace, dude. Dog mace. Or a large stick, like a broomstick. You don't have to stab it, and good luck, good luck trying that. What are you going to do? And if, if the dog, say the dog got locked on to the client dog. What, what, what are you going to do? Are you going to start stabbing the dog that's locked onto your client's dog? Don't let that happen, of course, but I'm just curious. Like, wouldn't, wouldn't there be a different approach that you could use? Uh, let's see. Dog mace, taser. Um, there's a lot of things that are less psycho than that, and it's just psycho that... Unbelievable. Now, with most of my dogs, if, if I put them in the backyard, I'm out here with them. Some of them, I might go inside and get something to drink, go to the bathroom, whatever. I don't have to watch them like a hawk. And using that term makes sense because I just, there was just a hawk in that tree. I heard it first and then, it, then I saw him up there, right? Him, her, whatever. And... With Billy the Hedgehog, it wouldn't, it wouldn't matter. Billy, here. Billy's around. Yeah, there's Billy. So it wouldn't matter. A hawk couldn't do anything to Billy the Hedge. But like with Mango, a dog that Mango's, is mango size, that I am like any small dog, which is my dog, Mango, he's about seven pounds. I won't let him out here. I'm, I might run back in the door for like, five seconds and then come right back out here if there's a larger animal out here a hawk they're not going to try anything they aren't they're just going to see the larger animal it's it's not a problem but if, if you have a small dog don't ever leave it in your backyard alone and to think that like you live in the suburbs or something man i see we have red-tailed hawks in new york city so don't don't think that you're you're safe in New York City. It can happen there too. Some dogs like, like let, let's talk about Luna. Luna, I don't know how much she weighs. She's she probably she weighs more than Mango, but she looks bigger. She looks bigger, so she probably wouldn't be considered food. She she looks bigger. She might not be that much bigger, but because of the fluffiness. She'll look bigger. The hawk probably won't go for her. You got a real small dog. You got a, like a four-pound Yorkie. I wouldn't even dart back in like I will with Mango. I might, I, I might, if it's Mango and he would be out here alone, I might go in that door and not keep an eye on him totally, you know, just for a second or two. If I'm working on the yard, I'm not a total freak. If he's walking around... I know I'm out here, and I don't have to be right next to him, but it can happen. It, it can happen. If it's a 10-pound dog or above, you're probably okay. But there's other issues other than the hawk. When you have a small dog like that, there's coyotes. In some areas, there's wolves. There's all kinds of predators that could fuck with the small dog. A fox could take out a small dog. Be very careful. Dogs should never be left alone unattended like I'm set I'm saying I'm not a complete nut if you know Billy's out here if I want to go inside for a second get something to drink or whatever it's okay but really don't put them in the backyard unattended you have no idea how many times I'm hearing these stories from dog owners that do this they let their dog in the backyard and then all of a sudden it's jumping the fence you know, or digging under the fence or just doing something that it creates a behavioral problem because the dog is you're not watching the dog like hey Billy 
if B Billy was eating grass or something like that, I would tell him no. You have your dog out here in the backyard, it's eating grass, eating grass, and then all of a sudden your dog has bloat and you're run or you don't even know that the dog has bloat because it ate grass in the backyard, it's unattended, you don't know that the dog is sick, it eats the grass, an hour later it's on the ground dying, you come out, rush it to the hospital, it doesn't make it. There's so many examples that I can give you all not to leave your dog unattended. I'm not a nut. I'm not a nut. If you want to go in and get your coffee and come back out, okay, okay, I get it. I do the same thing. But for extended periods of time, you are you must be out of your fucking mind. Look at look at Billy the Hedgehog. Sherry, Sherry Lucas gave me Billy the Hedgehog years ago. And Billy is is sort of rambunctious, aren't you, Bill? I've been I've been working with uh Luna and Billy. They're pretty good around each other, right? Billy knows she's not fixed. He wants to have some puppies. I told him no. No puppies, Billy. You know, it really is not a big deal if, if getting your dog fixed. They're healthier. I'm thinking about this, but it, it is. It's healthier for the dog not to fix the dog. It is. Read the studies done by, um, done by University of California Davis. It's it's so clear that it's unhealthy for you. This is stuff that dog trainers have known about for years. We, ne we would never get our dog fixed because th they become unhealthy. Joint disease, cancer, all kinds of things are more prevalent in a dog that's fixed. It's a fact. Just think, think, think about it this way. If you were castrated, if you were male and castrated, you would be totally different. You know, if... if if you if if you were a female and it would be the same thing. You can't you can't expect the dog to be healthier because it was fixed. Some study that they cite about like the the dog that spay, you know, before a year old, whatever, and those dogs have less um, chance of getting breast cancer. Okay, but they have chances of getting other kinds of cancer. It's ridiculous. It's like with the with the with the male dogs, they say, "Well, if if your dog is castrated, it won't get prostate cancer." Okay? But if your dog does get prostate cancer, how do they treat that? They castrate the dog. What's the problem? I have 3 dogs that do frisbee now. I had Brewster and I early maybe 3 3 years ago I gave it a shot with Tonka and Billy. They didn't take to it right away and we were doing other stuff, so I got sidetracked, but about a, two weeks ago, something like that, I decided to teach them, you know, I have time to do it. So um, I taught them and both of them caught the Frisbee today. Check it out, check out Billy the Hedgehog catch a Frisbee. He's not bad. This is his first day doing it. Pretty good, Bill. Nice. Come here, Bill. Heel. Good at this. Billy the Hedge. Oh, yeah, he's into it, all right. Drop. Seriously, he loves it. He looks like a frisbee dog, and now he is, aren't you, Bill? Look at look at Billy. I got Billy from Sherry Lucas about three or four years ago. He's pretty awesome. He's a great athlete. He's one of my one of my dogs. That's him and Tonka are really great athletes. Brewster is too, but Brewster is 
was neutered when he was like eight weeks old or something, so he's pretty underdeveloped. But, um, you know, for, for being, uh, you know, castrated as a baby, Brewster's a pretty good athlete too, but, but Billy, Billy the Hedgehog. Good job, Bill. That's pretty good. Congratulations, dude. I'm at Home Depot with Lona. I need to get insulation for my tin roof, like the ridge cap, and uh, some screws, something else. I'll buy something else, I'm sure. Right, Luna? Boy, this Luna, this Doug Luna. Oh my God, she's doing the dummy launcher. She's great. She's a kind of an off-white color nowadays. Aren't you, alone? I think we're gonna go swimming after this in Lake Seneca. She likes to swim, don't you, alone? She says yes. Somebody's got some yappy dog in a car. Luna, sit. No, sit. Down. Sit. No, sit. Down. No, down. Sit. Boy, this dog, Luna, I'm looking at stuff. It, it, it's like she's not even here, but she's here. She's not giving me any shit. You're awesome, dude. She could be a little spaz. Luna, could you be a little spaz? It, it, yeah, I bet you could be. Man, she's is a very good dog. The dummy launcher. Come on, man. This dog's awesome. Luna, you're a good girl. She's being awesome. God, Luna was fucking awesome. Luna, get back at heel. She's a little excited, but pretty, pretty much sublime. I'm not saying I'm Trump. I mean, I, I read, um, like, genuine. She'll, she'll read books. Like, it sounds like she's reading a different book every couple days and shit, you know? My mother was like that. My mother was an avid reader. She's always reading, you know, which I never acquired that. You know, I know my brother Michael, he, he's like that. He reads all the time. I don't think my little brother John does, you know? Maybe he does, I don't know. I just, uh, I'll read like the New York Times and shit like that. I'm not gonna pick up a book. I think the last book that I read was, was on ravens and crows, something like that. People have asked me like, they'll ask me for like, well, what, what, what dog training book would you recommend? And I'm like, well, I'm, I can't. I can't. That's not how I learned dog training. So, what have I, what have I read? Um, dog training in the 1980s, like 19. Oh, my father gave me the Water Dog. That was when I was uh, 20. That was by a friend of his, Richard Walters. That's a pretty famous old school dog trainer, very similar to my dad. Um, no food. No food training. I read that book. I read one of the monks and new skeet books probably in the 90s. Yeah, late 90s. Um, oh, in late late 80s, I, I read a book by Bash Deerba. And, um, you know, it was okay. You know, he's, he's all, all old school. You know, the monks and new skeet, Richard Walters, and... Um, I, you know, I, I, I didn't, I didn't learn dog training that way. I learned by, you know, dealing with my dad. So I, I really, I can't give you any insight into who to read. One, I'm not really a reader, and I think that video instruction is better than book, especially when you're talking about dog training. It is. You know, if, if somebody's writing a, a book about dog training and they're trying to explain how to hold a leash, they'll sound like nonsense. But that's the, uh, that's the movie I'd like to make. It's like a Bigfoot movie, so it's sort of looks like bubblegum on the outside, but it's sort of um, packed full. It's a thought-out movie, and it's um, meant to make, make people think. In the first scene, the Bigfoot's uh, parents are killed 
they're being chased by some hunters and they get to the edge of a cliff and they hide the, the young Bigfoot and to save the little foot they sacrifice themselves by jumping off the cliff and the, the hunters leave they don't they don't see the baby that's the first scene and then he grows up the little foot on his own as a, as a wild you know kind of a wild child Bigfoot but gravitates because he's lonely to the city Lona's mom just sent me a text saying that it's a Facebook page that's all about feeding your dog human food you know it's it's terrible it's terrible and I sent her back a text that there's like this dog in New York City the Shiba Inu that uh, is exploited that way on YouTube I think the dog's name is ha Hanu or so, Hanru I don't know what it is but it's a Shiba Inu and they live in Queens and they give a cheese pot it's all about like giving the dog human food it's really horrible to watch it is it's horrible to watch and then there's like all these kids and idiots underneath the videos encouraging the you know the owners to do this it's it's just nonsense with this dog it's horrible like you, you think that the dog's diet it's okay to give it human food you screw up the dog's calcium phosphorus level to just to say the least it's it's sick I'm seeing a, a text from Luna's mom saying it's sick it is it's sick it's not good you don't give your dog cheese puffs they don't need it so why would you even start that when I'm on the subject of Luna's mom I said I think one of the Gabor sisters had a catone and she said I don't know I don't know about that but she came back with a text saying that Barbara Streisand did and Barbara Streisand's dog died when it was 14 years old so she had it cloned for fifty thousand dollars now she has two of the the same genetic same dog you know what does it matter with people like what you you, you couldn't get an, another dog you had to get genetically the same dog what's it gonna is it gonna is it also gonna die right on the same day and shit like what what like why do you want the same genetic thing you know, the clones aren't as healthy as the originals. That's how it is. Dolly the sheep was very unhealthy. The, the offspring of the clones can be totally normal, but the, um, the, the clones themselves, they, they, it doesn't work out well. It's that point where they're zapping it with fucking electricity. You can't get that right. You can't do it better than nature. So they're, they're sort of unhealthy. So you pay all this money. Why? Because you're sad? Why didn't you just go get... You like the breed? Go get another Catone. Bar, uh, Babs. Why, why didn't you do that, Barbara Streisand? I'm going to get a, get a hot dog before we go in the water. So I'm starving. Luna, sit. It's a good dog. I like those seagulls. I've always been a fan of seagulls. They're pretty cool. It's pretty much the same thing as yesterday. I just walk her, good girl, I just walk her up to the water. If she hesitates, I bring her along. And we'll probably give her a break and not do that tomorrow. And we'll probably do it the next day. All right, there's another dog out here. That could be helpful. There's a hottie laying around here yesterday. I don't see her. I don't want to sound like I'm objectifying women saying stuff like that but she was a total piece of ass their little bikini bathing suit it's pretty adorable but I didn't really look I just sort of noticed like oh she's a piece of ass hey Luna see how Luna does walking in just walking her at heel chest deep water come on heel Good, Luna. Come on, heel. Come on. Good, good girl. Oh, it's real warm there. Oh, yeah, let's stand right here. Keep 
climb up here, climb up on this rock. Come up here. That, that park's five bucks to go into. I'm gonna, on the weekends, I, on the weekdays, I don't have to pay five dollars to go in that park. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come down here with Luna and one of my dogs. I don't know who. Ike would be the best, but Ike has, uh, he's old. You know, he's got skin issues. I don't know if I wanna, yeah, maybe I'll use Ike. He'll be fine sort of adamant that I want Luna to be able to, um, you know, be fine around water. You know, I want all dogs to be able to swim. You know, they should. They should be able to swim. She can swim, of course, but I mean, like, it would be great. They have a pool. I would honestly, with this white dog, I would have her jumping in the pool a couple times a week, at least. Go do a retrieve. She's white. She's like got this white, white fur that turns to an off-white. Just go, go jump in the pool, Luna. You know, these white dogs and the tear stains, it's like a, um, you know, if it bothers you, you know. You know, you could deal with it daily and then you won't have any, any white stain or any uh, tear stains. Few people are like that obsessed about keeping the dog super white, unless you're going to show the dog at Westminster. It really doesn't matter. Um, with her, you know, you can you could take like a little hydrogen peroxide on a piece of you know whatever. You know, it could be like a paper towel, whatever. Just sort of wipe it down daily. I don't. I don't, I have, I, you know, I mean, you know, the dog's staying with me, I take care of the dog, but I'm sure that lots of people look at the dogs that are staying with me going, he's, he's not grooming that dog. No, I'm not, I, I don't really, I, I, I do, I, I comb her out, she's good in the bath, you know, I'm, I'm the reason why she's good in the bath, she was shitty in the bath, you know, I, I told her you have to behave. You know, I, I run a comb through her, you know. At least once a week, I do something with her, you know. It might just be taking the rounded scissors and, you know, going down, down through a mat. But I'm going to, you know, look her over with a comb and a pair of scissors and just sort of like, you know. That's, that's, God, my fingernails are filthy. I've been working in the yard. Um, that's the trick is don't ever cut a mat out. Take your scissors and go down it. Split it. That's the way you do it. I was just thinking about that that UFO I saw a few years back and what size it was. And I'm looking at these, you know those hay bales, those circular hay, hay, hay bales? It would be like twice the size of one of those. Spherical. You know, something like that, like twice the size of one of those. Yeah, sure. I said this, it's like a, like a car, like a small car, but spherical. I, I, you know, I don't, I, when I saw it, I was like, what the fuck am I seeing? What, what is this? I, I said to myself, Did, is this something from another world? That's what I said. It's fucking, I was flipped out. I was, I was, I was this is the truth. I was freaked out. I um, I left the next day and went down to Brooklyn. Just in this like, what did I see? My neighbor saw it. I was asking other neighbors if they saw it. Only only one was out in his yard next door. Joe, he saw it. Um, nobody else saw it. It's still to this day. It's just like if if let me out. I remember being downstate and going, I gotta get to the house and having anxiety coming back up. And I remember sleeping upstairs, you know, sort of flipped out that like, there is something else in this world. And it's, 
it's here on this, you know, it's coming here to this planet, you know. I, I,